Hi, I'm Alex, and like many of you, I'm looking to get a dog. Dogs are known the world over to be brilliant, loving companions who can make our lives better in so many different ways. However, it's crucial that we give these animals as much love and respect as they give us. And that applies right from the very start when we're looking to get ourselves a dog in the first place. I've recently been seeing a worrying amount of social media posts about something which, to be honest, hadn't really come up on my radar before, illegal puppy farming. Whilst I don't know much about this practice, I've definitely seen enough to realise it's not something I want to support. So, if you share my concerns and you're looking to get a dog, or if you're unaware of puppy farming and you simply want to know more, then join me as I try to find out more about this crime, how it's best avoided, and crucially, the right way to get a dog. Firstly, I went to see Lisa and her dog Oki, who she suspected might have been from a puppy farm. I'm Lisa, this is Oki who will be two in a couple of weeks. Okay, so when did you, uh, when did you get Oki? Uh, we got Oki in April 2020. Mm -hmm. um, it was locked down. Um, we had lost, we've, we've had three border, he's our third border, and our second one we lost, she unfortunately got run over, and it was coming up to about a year and we were feeling ready to have another dog. Okay. So we started looking for a border puppy. Um, there was something about when you got Oki that you thought was a bit off, is that right? Yeah, so I, we did everything that you probably shouldn't do, which was um, we were kind of looking around, but because of lockdown you weren't allowed to travel very far, mm. so there were a lot of these puppies, but they were all up north. Okay. Um, and then one came, he came up, and he was about 45 minutes away, and um, he, um, she's, because it was COVID, she spun me this web of... Um, you know, I live in with my parents, they're vulnerable, she didn't want to meet me at the house, so she asked to meet me at the local Sainsbury's car park. This is the cellar? This is the cellar. And I did think then, oh, that sounds a bit, you know, I don't know, I, I should have just thought this sounds off. But I didn't, I guess like, we were excited, mm -hmm. we were ready for another dog. And um, so when we went to get him, she said that he uh, was a fully pedigree dog, not that I'm bothered with that, but he was fully ped pedigree, he was chipped, and he'd had his like vaccinations of eight weeks and everything. And um, and then when we got there, um, she was in a brand new car and everything, and I thought, oh, it's fine. And when she got out, she had her pajama bottoms on, and he looked fine, he looked lovely. And um, she said, oh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the pedigree um, forms. And I should have said there and then, I'll pay you half, mm now and half when I get the forms, but I, I didn't. I just said, okay, that's fine. I, I'm quite a trusting person, I guess. And um, and then she, um, but there was a couple of things I noticed when I was paying her by transfer. Um, I noticed that her name was not the name that she gave me. Mm. And um, so there was definitely signs that I probably should have picked up and actually acted on, but I didn't. He, look, he looked good. And um, me and my eldest daughter Willow, we went and got him, and we were really happy. Yeah. So yeah, and we got him and brought him home, and everyone, <laughs> everyone was great. Yeah, so. I mean, I imagine it's easily done if it's something you were you aware of puppy farming before you got okay. Yeah, I was. I was aware of puppy farming. Um, yeah, because um, I've had a friend who had that experience like years and years ago. Yeah. And um, obviously, it's a, a bad thing because they breed like a dog continually throughout the year. Um, just because they want to get money and they're in like poor conditions and mm. stuff and so quite often the dog you'll get the puppy and it won't be very well because right, okay. it's not been um, kept in good conditions or anything like that so did so, that was that your experience as well once you've got Oki there were I think there were definitely signs because after about three days so I took him to the vet to get him checked out and um, and then that's when we realized we'd be com being completely scammed because he hadn't been chipped the vet didn't think that he'd had his um, injections and um, and that yeah it was a complete scam and he wasn't we weren't sure like how old roughly he was or anything like that and then basically he um, we noticed that his eye his eyelid started to kind of like thicken up and I mentioned it to the, the vet and they, they were like oh yeah something's not quite right and then literally that was the start of a bit of a nightmare um, because he then got really, really ill very, very quickly, mm. really quickly. So, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good. So the whole process must have been really tough for Oki. 
Uh, but what kind of impact did it have on you at the time? Lockdown did us a favour because I, I've had two porters before, like one who was lived to 16 and one Poppy lived to 8. And I've probably been to the vets, like just, you know, a normal checkup yeah. and nothing else. With him, we were at the vets like twice a week. He cost a lot of money because he was so, we didn't have, we took insurance out on that third day, but it was too late because I'd already mentioned the eye. Mm. So that cost a lot of money. He, um, at the money, it, it didn't matter about the money. It was more the fact that we were having to, we used to bath him in the sink, like in the morning and in the afternoon. And he he had, I mean, not to, it sounds horrible, but he had a bacterial infection in everywhere, everywhere. And then he got this, what they call puppy strangles. And I, I've grown up with dogs and I, I thought I knew pretty much everything about dogs, but I'd never heard of puppy strangles. And it's mainly in horses, but dogs can get it. And it is horrible. Basically they lose all their um, fur around their nose. You can see that his nose is a bit longer than- So it's happened to Oki. Yeah, it, yeah. so um, he lost all his fur around here and around his eyes and he got really deep ulcers so they'd be like weeping um, and he just he was just really ill mm. and so he had a, he had a lot of medication so the actual the time that we had him I mean he, he actually was amazing in himself he's a really happy dog so he he was great in that respect um, but I just used to like bathe him and then I would wrap him in a towel and then I would just cuddle him. I think that's why he's so cuddly because <laughs> he spent the first year of his life just being cuddled the whole yeah. time. Um, but it was it was really emotional to see him like that. You couldn't enjoy him as a puppy because he was so ill. Okay. So yeah. yeah, it was really bad. And of course I tried to contact her so many times to, I, I you know, I was just saying, look, what's done is done but just at least tell me like when was he born where's he come from that just a little bit more about his backstory because he just doesn't have one mm. so but yeah she just yeah. yeah she just ignored it all so so you, you said you got Oki during lockdown yeah um is that something you've noticed puppy farming's been an increasing issue during lockdown? yeah definitely um yeah I've had um I know somebody who's had who's had that experience and people that have just basically got scammed out mm. of um, dogs, putting deposits down, turning up for the dog, and then mm. the dog's not there. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think lockdown and the prices of dogs definitely went up massively, right. like hugely. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's our most expensive dog to date. <laughs> so do you have any advice for people who are looking to get a dog now but don't want to have a similar experience to the one you had with Oki? So I think to do the right thing, which is what we did with our last two dogs, um, which would be to go and see, go and actually meet the owners, mm -hmm. see the, um, the the mother of the dog, of the, of the puppies, and um, just get a use, like an idea of their environment and stuff yeah. like that, and do it properly. Don't don't cut any corners like we did. Okay. <laughs> and if people are having any doubts similar to the ones you were having about Oki, do you think maybe a vet is the best person to go to? Yeah, definitely. Talk to someone who's got experience and stuff. And yeah, I think just try and not f follow your heart as much. Just try and be a bit more sensible about like how how it is and, you know, not do what we did. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that with us. Okay. Really appreciate Pleasure. it. And really interesting to hear. Pleasure. After hearing Lisa's story, I was keen to learn more about the physical problems that puppy farming can cause. So I went to visit a vet called JT. My name is JT. I'm a veteran surgeon, I have been since 2015. Um, I'm the founder of The Mind Vet, which is a veterinary practice that um, works mainly with patients, dogs and cats with behavioural um, disorders. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my sort of background really. Yeah, so you've got some, uh, some good experience as a vet, and I imagine you've probably seen quite a lot of puppies come into the practice um, whilst, you've been, whilst you've been a vet. What are the sort of the common health issues that you've seen puppies suffer from that may be from a puppy farm? So I guess the first the first barrier to, to answer that question though is that um, oftentimes people don't know because people are not aware the puppies are coming from puppy farms so often they come to the vets and we actually flag it to them and so ask a few questions you know where did you get this dog from uh, you know have you met the mum have you you know have you seen the environment you know do they ask you any questions um, and then we look at them and oftentimes we see that they are and they're nourished, they may, you may be able to see their ribs, for instance, you know, you look at their, their fur, maybe quite scruffy, quite dull, 
Um, oftentimes they're very shy puppies, so I expect most puppies when they come to the vet for the first time to be very interactive, very happy, you know, very bubbly. And um, some some puppies from puppy farms or from you know suspected puppy farms, they they're not like that. They're very shy. They haven't had any human interaction. Mm. Um, and yeah, we we they're often just not in a in a good state. You know, they're quite quite um, quite fragile puppy. Sure. I guess so across all breeds, um, the way in which puppies are brought up on a puppy farm, what kind of physical impacts does that have? So puppies that were that were born in a puppy farm environment, they, they, they suffer from several um, issues really. The first is genetics, you know, from, from the before they were born sort of point of view. Uh, these dogs are highly inbred. Um, there's no there's no attention paid to the specific um, characteristics of the parents you know they may be you know people are not doing any screening tests for instance so from a genetic point of view you're at a disadvantage already when when you when you start but then you think of the maternal stress so during their um, you know during their their in uterus developmental stage you then look at the effects of stress during their very early stage of development, and we know there's several studies that show that that will have an impact in their um, in the future um, behavioural characteristics of, of those individuals. Um, you then look at you know the poor environment they're kept in. You know they can they can come home with some viral diseases, bacterial diseases. You can look at parvovirus. You can look at in you know, all sorts of of, um, of illnesses they can carry from the moment they were born. They often have worms and parasites that will have an impact in their uh, normal development. So these are puppies that are predisposed to being quite ill individuals. Um, some of them in the short term, but a lot of them in the long term. And from obviously from my area of work, I see a lot of puppies um, that will end up having behavioural problems because of all these um, you know, conditions pre and post um, birth, really. And they have permanent effects? Um, most of them are, yeah. So, um, You've got a combination, especially if we look at, for instance, lockdown puppies, you have a combination here of very inexperienced owners, you know, people that never really had a dog, um, never really thought of having a dog. I mean, there's a, a, a recent research from the Kennel Club um, from 2020 that found out that, you know, a lot of people were talking, I think it's 40% of people, um, research for less than two hours before buying a puppy. So these are very inexperienced dog owners. Um, they've done very little research, mm. oftentimes less than two hours. Um, and then puppies that come from environments that are not the best. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a deadly combination, really. And I've seen, I think my um, average age, the average age of my patient in my behavioural medicine clinic has gone down significantly in the past couple of years. Wow. Um, I'm seeing four-month-old puppies that are incredibly shy, suffering with anxiety disorders, um, that can turn um, aggressive. Um, you know, we're talking about compulsive disorders, a lot of puppies uh, I'm seeing before the age of one. Right, okay, yeah. So Le Lisa actually got her puppy, Oki, during lockdown. Um, and you, have you seen a lot more uh, puppies come into the practice since the pandemic? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, there's the numbers of, of, of dog ownership in the UK has gone up significantly in the past two, two years. And that's a combination of people being more lonely, people having more time at home. Um, maybe um, unreasonable expectations for the future. People thinking because they're more at home, they're going to be more at home, so they're going to have more time um, and maybe the funds to, to uh, finance having a dog. Um, but I've seen a lot more puppies in general and I've seen a lot more puppies with behavioural problems um, since lockdown, for sure, yeah. Okay. Of course, it's impossible to say whether a dog is from a puppy farm or not, but let's say they are. If they are, why are they more likely to fall ill, um, having been brought up in those conditions? So, for several reasons. Um, the first one being their genetics. These, these dogs are, are you know, highly interbred. Um, which means the genetic pool is actually quite quite small. They're more likely to have uh, illnesses that you wouldn't see in a normal population. Uh, but also, um, there's no there's no care uh, you know being taken in terms of uh, selecting the right individuals to breed from. Um, so there's no screening tests. So these these guys are more a lot more likely to carry um, illnesses that you know that, that you you shouldn't be seeing. But also you think about um, stress, and stress can be a very um, detrimental can have a very detrimental effect on their development. Stress 
um, during um, the time that the mom is pregnant, but also stress post uh, postnatal stress. You know the environment uh, these these dogs are kept in. Think about nutrition. You know they're not getting the the right nutrition neither themselves or the mom. So that will have um, for sure um, an impact on their um, on their on their health, and it will just set them up for for failure really. Mm. And also socialization is important to mention. These puppies don't really have um, much um, exposure to other dogs and people that tend to be kept away. Or uh, the, extreme, um, the extreme opposite would be being kept in very high populated, highly populated environments. And both of those extremes are very detrimental for their normal development. Mm. And they'll end up being puppies that are uh, either more reactive or more shy. Um, in terms of interacting with people and dogs and they're more likely in the future to develop um, anxiety disorders for mm. instance which is incredibly common in these dogs. So it's common for those problems to persist quite long into the future? Absolutely yeah um, and, and left untreated they could be um, life-threatening really. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah so we learned from Lisa I'd say that getting a puppy that could be from a puppy farm is a huge emotional uh, cost as well as a financial one how would you recommend that people avoid getting a, a puppy that's from a farm, um, as far as they can tell, of course? I think the most important thing is people understanding that um, they need to think about getting a puppy the same way they would about making any life-changing decision. You know, buying a puppy is not the same as buying a shirt, it's not the same as buying a car even. You know, you're making a, a decision that will, you know, of, you make a decision with consequences that will last for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so the first thing you've got to know is, well, am I prepared to own a puppy? Um, am I prepared to raise a puppy? And if the answer is yes, then the next question is, are you prepared to own that puppy for 20 years? Because mm -hmm. if you're not, then you shouldn't get one. If you are, then you need to start thinking, do I really want a puppy or do I want a dog? You know, do I want a puppy that I'll raise from eight weeks old? If so, do your research, make sure that the breed that you're looking at um, matches your lifestyle and you can provide them with uh, you know, all, those, uh, all their needs, really. Um, but maybe you don't need to get a puppy. Maybe, maybe you can get an adult dog that is looking for a home and there's literally hundreds of thousands of those in the UK waiting to get adopters. And yes, some of them may have come from uh, you know, challenging backgrounds and maybe they've ha they have their own histories, but the vast majority of them are just looking for a home. Um, and in reality, maybe most people are not prepared for a puppy and they will be prepared for, a, for an adult dog mm -hmm. um, that is already maybe house trained and has got plenty of love to give. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like the right advice. And I think matches quite closely what Lisa was saying as well. So uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that. No, no worries. Anytime. Okay. So speaking with JT, the vet the other day, I definitely learned a few things which I hadn't initially considered. One of those things is that getting a dog whilst avoiding puppy farming isn't always as simple as it seems. But one possible solution could be to get a rescue dog, and that's why I've come here today to meet Lou, who's got just a few rescues of her own. Hi Lou. Hi Alex. How's it going? You've brought a few friends with you, I see. Yeah, these are all my rescue dogs. So they're all rescues? Yep, every single one. And uh, they all have different backstories, I guess? Yeah, all different stories, all different backgrounds. So let's go with let's go with this, this guy here. What's <laughs> so his story? This is Lyra. Uh, she was rescued in Spain. Uh, unfortunately, her and her litter mates were, um, were not wanted, so they were um, were taken in by a foster and she came over and uh, and the rest is history. Sure and is it always kind of easy to get the backstory of the dog you take from a rescue? Not necessarily, um, some of them are strays. Um, I mean Amos, uh, he was found uh, wandering the streets so we don't know much about him. Um, whereas um, for instance Rudy, uh, he, was, he lived with a family. Um, he grew up um, until he was 10 months old with them and then he came to live with me. So sure. it varies. And getting rescues, I guess, generally brings quite a lot of benefits to the dogs, of course, based on those backstories. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they get to, to come into a home that loves them and they get to um, enjoy a brand new life, um, whatever life that is. And um, yeah, they, they get to reward you with lots of love and, and entertaining stories. So yeah, you've got a few good memories with these guys as the owner, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You'd recommend probably going about getting a rescue dog how would you go about doing that so easily? Um, well, there's a few ways you can do that. Um, you can uh, go to a rescue centre. Sure. Um, a lot of rescue centres as well, they have Facebook pages or websites. You can go and look at one of those. Um, 
and what you need to do is get in touch with them and you know say oh you know I'm interested in this dog that you have available or do you have any dogs that are available that might fit my lifestyle um, they will ask you to fill in a questionnaire um, and it's really good to be honest in those questionnaires because it means you get a dog that fits your lifestyle and they then will do a home check to make sure that your house is suitable meet you meet your family and then you'll get to meet the dog um, that might be at a rescue center or at a foster home and uh, and then you should uh, hopefully be able to take that dog home fingers with you. crossed yeah <laughs> and is it always an adult dog you'd get or is it kind of puppies that you get from rescues a lot of the time as well um, again it varies um i mean ajax and lyra were both four months old when i got them okay uh, rudy was about 10 months um, and Amos was about six or seven so sure. you know th there's a big range of, of ages yeah. there are a lot of older dogs in rescue that need um need a home for that for their twilight years yeah okay but going about getting a rescue is probably one of the safest ways to get a dog um i mean yeah it's also you get um a lot of the rescues will offer rescue backup so if something were to happen and, and let's say that dog doesn't necessarily fit in right. with your lifestyle or um you know your circumstances change they, they should be able to support you and and help you with with that dog as well yeah. so yeah getting a rescue dog is very rewarding okay well i guess i'll have to look at getting a rescue <laughs> at some point then thanks so much lou no worries really appreciate you sharing that with no us problem. and uh, yeah thanks a lot thank you so there we are. I've really enjoyed talking with Lisa, JT and Lou over the last few days and it's fair to say I've learned a lot. From Lisa, I learned that buying from an unreputable source can actually be a really easy mistake to make, but one that can have lasting negative consequences. From JT, I learned that puppy farming can cause not just physical, but also behavioural issues in dogs. Equally, knowing whether or not your dog is from a puppy farm isn't always so black and white, which is why doing your research before you buy is so crucial. Once you've done that research, where you get your dog from is up to you. But as I learned from Lou, it's important to remember that rescues could be a safe option and you don't always need to get a puppy. There are lots of adult dogs who are already in need of a home. Hopefully now, like me, you feel a little more aware of how to go about getting a dog without supporting puppy farming. For more information, visit www.naturewatch.org who have been campaigning to end illegal puppy farming for a number of years.